This is ag country. It's not the mountains of Colorado that you see in commercials. Sometimes you might see the best buck in the world and you really want to go out there and kill him, but it's pool table flat and you're not getting anywhere close to him. It's, it's always an active hunt. You get to see the game. Beautiful scene on the mound here, isn't it? You get to check it out with, with long glass, get on them, plan your stalk in a very visual kind of way, and then start to make that plan depending on the wind, depending on how spooky they are, depending on your cover. It's a pretty interactive and fun hunt. Opening morning of pronghorn camp here at Full Draw Outfitters dawned clear and calm. Pronghorn hunt is spot and stalk. Generally, you're hunting from a truck because you're covering a lot of ground. You're trying to cover a lot of different pastures to pick over the pronghorns, or in some cases, just trying to find them. When you're getting in and out of a truck all day long, a different problem presents itself. If you got a really long rifle, really long barrel, a heavy rifle, becomes a pain getting in and out of that truck. NRA Publications was meeting with staff of Remington at SHOT Show 2018 to talk about some new products from Remington. Remington personnel kept returning to a, a special project they had just completed. They were really proud of it, and they should have been, as it was a very fine rifle that displayed their ability to do on-demand production, if you will. And they realized that consumers recognized it as their commitment to do on demand. And I said, well, we can do that. But as we see now, we have the Remington Model 700 American Hunter in production, and it's a fine gun. We're really proud of it. We're seeing quite a few antelope. We've, uh, we've passed a couple bucks this morning. Got a lot of antelope down in this big bottom. We have a nice ditch we can get down in if we need to. I'm just gonna wait and see if I see something, uh, you know, a respectable buck that we wanna go after. We've got a couple does right here behind us, about 150 to 200 yards. So I'm just gonna sit up here in the truck using optics. Me and Scott are gonna glass for a while and uh, see if we can find one we wanna go after. We were driving around a prairie and I saw a buck about the same time Fred did, and he was 500 or 800 yards away from us. And as soon as Fred threw up his binocular, he said, I may have a good buck there. And when an outfitter says, that's a buck we want to shoot, well, it's game on. Now it's time to do everything you can to try to make that happen. We were able to use the topography to our advantage. We dropped down in a drainage And that concealed our approach for the longest time. Stay low. Let's close it up a little bit. Let's look at him from over here. But we're about to where they're bedded. They're all still bedded. Eventually, it peters out, and then the land flattens out, and you start using bushes to hide your approach. Eventually, you start running out of bushes, and now you're duck walking. Let's see what he's doing, son of a bitch. Let's see what he's doing. The buck starts running, we have to do a U-turn. It's typical on a pronghorn hunt. You'll, you'll run 100 yards, he'll run 200 yards farther to get ahead of you. It gets old. They're aware of their excellent eyesight and their speed. They use both to their advantage. Okay. Yeah, he's moving, let's go. We start paralleling him along this barbed wire fence. He's 400 yards to our right. He's at 410. And Fred's looking through the binocular and he's giving me range updates. 375, 365, 360. I drop down. 321. But the buck is coming into my range. Walking to the left. Hold on, he'll stop. I'm set up. I've been able to control my breathing. Taking a couple deep breaths. The gun's off safe. I got my parallax adjusted. I'm at 14 power and I'm just tracking him, and now he's walking, and he stops. 3.30. Nice shot! 
Nice shooting, sir. And look at the beautiful mountains in the backdrop. Doesn't get much prettier than that. That's a pronghorn hunt. Well, that's the second animal we've shot together. I watched you make a great shot on an elk, and you just made a heck of a shot on an antelope. You know what I mean? And what's great is that gun's set up to do that. Yes. I mean, you just took a 331 yard shot, and we passed up bucks at 200. We had other ones at 150, 175. That was one of the better bucks we've been on, and you made a great shot on it. You've got a gun that's supremely accurate. I got an excellent, well rested position. You've got a rifle and a cartridge are going to do it. You've got a loop hold scope I can dial right in on the elevation. That suppressor made it sound like a 22 going off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't sound. It doesn't sound like it's out there. Well, well, it takes the recoil out too, so I can follow it, reload, and I haven't lost my sight picture. You know? Great shot, man. Good job. Let's go look at your butt. They literally are a product of their environment. They smell like the sagebrush flats that they inhabit. All right. All right. Mm. Yes. Beautiful buck. Beautiful buck. <laughs> Look at that guy. Got beautiful cutters on him. Big dark face. Plan finally came together. <laughs> Look at the ivory tips on the last half inch. When you kill your buck and you walk up to it, the first thing you're hit with is, is the scent. You grab their horns, you admire your buck, and then you realize your hands smell like that buck. They smell like the sagebrush that buck has been rubbing. You know, the past decade, America has lost millions of hunters. No one's really sure why. We can point to a lot of reasons why. Uh, There's no single reason why. The one single thing is, it is a fact, we've lost millions of hunters. So when, when you're able to gather in a camp like this with people from all over the country, at a place like Full Draw Outfitters with the i family, you realize you really feel at home, that this is what you wish for all hunters across the country, because then maybe we wouldn't lose hunters. If people could come and, 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 and share this fellowship like we experience at a camp like Full Draw creates, maybe we keep more people in the field. So I think it's our job as outdoor communicators to, to convey this fellowship, to convey this passion to our readers and our viewers, to try to keep them in the field. Because this, this is important to the habitat that America embodies. This is important to our game populations, that without hunters, our game populations will not continue to flourish. Without hunters, America will really lose an important part of her personality, I think. This country was founded on hunting. Hunting is as old as humankind. It needs to continue to exist, particularly in a 21st century America that is continuing to pave over habitat and lay down concrete.